preparation. It is true in, in, in life we, um, we prepare ourselves for um, many, for life in general. From the, from the time a child um, is born, we um, begin to prepare that child um, for life ahead of them. Prepare them for school, and then they're prepared for um, university or whatever um, they may choose to do in life. Um, preparation for family. We have to uh, prepare ourselves for uh, the coming of Christ. Every one of us has to prepare ourselves for the coming of Christ. But we must also be prepared while we're here on this earth to work for Christ, to represent God while we're here. And that's very, very important uh, because God really works through us to spread the gospel of the kingdom. Long before Christ come, um, God worked with men uh, to, um, to manifest uh, to others, to kings and leaders, uh, that there is no other God like him that can do the things that he can do. I want to focus on a couple men in the Old um, Testament that I think we can learn a lot from. Um, we can learn a lot from a young man like Joseph. As a young man, he found himself in an awful situation, in prison, accused of trying to rape his boss's wife. He could have seen his condition or situation as hopeless. Instead, he kept a positive attitude, ready and prepared for whenever an opportunity comes his way to speak and clear his name. That was an awful thing for him. He was, he was very young, you know, maybe in his early 20s um, when he was um, put in prison. Um, but here is this young man that um, was um, hated by his siblings, um, treated him really, really bad, sold him. But you know, he always kept in touch with God. I, I believe that this man was always prepared um, to to speak on God's behalf. To, to as as I said here. In prison, he was waiting for an opportunity to clear his name. While in prison, um, this man did not have to care. Um, just think about all the things that he went through. Right? How his siblings mistreated him. Um, how, you know, while working for this man, this man put all things under his care, um, but then he was accused of trying to rape and the evidence was there because he left his coat or his clothes in this woman's hands. And it seems as though the, this um, evidence walked against him. Here it is. But Joseph knew he was innocent. In prison, like I said, he did not have to care, but he woke up one morning and the butler and the baker that was in prison, um, they looked very sad. And he was wondering why they were so sad. And they both um, said to him, we dream, separate dreams. And, but they had no one to interpret the dream. And Joseph said, you know, isn't interpretation of dreams belong to God? And he said, tell it to me. And they told Joseph the dream. And Joseph interpreted the dream. And he said, um, and he told him exactly what would happen. Um, how that the butler will be restored to his former position and the baker will be hanged on a tree in three days. So turn with me to chapter 40 of Genesis, verse 14 and 15. So after he interpreted the dream, this is what he said to the baker. But think on me when it shall be well with thee, 
and show kindness, I pray thee unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and there also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. So, so here Joseph, after interpreting the dream, he said to the butler, because the butler will be with the king, the chief of the butlers, right? Giving and making sure that um, the drink that the king drink is good, it's not spiked, the food that they eat. But, and Joseph is saying to him, remember me, you know, um, I didn't do anything wrong to be here. Notice, he, I said before, he said, dream interpretation of dreams belongs to God. You can, we can see that connection even in that awful situation that he found himself in. He stayed prepared, he stayed connected to God. He did not give up. He did not lose faith in God. He asked the butler to remember him. Uh, did the butler remember him? No, he did not. Not for a while. Um, two years later he did. So what triggered um, the memory to remember Joseph to help him out? Chapter 41 of Genesis. And it came to pass in the end of two full years, Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the bank river. He stood by the river. So Pharaoh had a dream. And what happened is he called for the wise men and the astrologers and so forth in his kingdom and no one was able to interpret the dream to Pharaoh. For first from the sudden and awful situation, the dream was very, very terrible to him. A very different and strange dream. And not finding anyone in verse 8 of chapter 41. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent a call for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them the dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Notice in verse 41, it was two years later when Pharaoh had this dream, when the butler was restored to his position. So Joseph was there two years. Probably wondering if this would ever happen, right? Here he interpreted the dream to both of them. One, exactly as he said it would happen. And so the butler um, explained to Pharaoh in verse 14 of 41, the butler really did tell Pharaoh about Joseph at this time and say to him, well, you know, there is this Hebrew guy that was in war with us when you put us there because you weren't happy with us. And we both dream. I, he restored to my position, and the other, he hung on the tree, and it happened exactly as he interpreted it. So, Pharaoh sent for Joseph in verse 14. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself, changed his raiment, and came in on to Pharaoh. You see here, this man was in an awful situation, right? He was not in a condition to just go to Pharaoh. They hastily brought him in to Pharaoh, right? They're bringing him in to interpret this dream. Remember before, the butler and the baker, Joseph said, interpretation of dreams belongs to God. So. This man is not in any condition, physically, to appear before the king. How about spiritually? Right? Was he prepared spiritually? And verse 15, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. I suggest to you, my brethren, that Joseph 
made this happen, you know? Uh, he did interpret the dream to tell me. If you gotta read on through the chapter um, to see the interpretation of the dream, the, or the dream and its interpretation, which I'm not getting into. But Joseph was able to answer. He said, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. This man was ready. This man was prepared as a young man in his 20s, right? He was connected to God. He was ready. He was prepared. His faithfulness in God attached uh, heavenly powers which enabled him to interpret uh, Pharaoh's dream. He did not have to reconnect. He did not have to prepare himself now that he is called. He was already connected. He was already prepared. And I just want to say that, you know, when you look at this young man and in his early 20s, uh, you might think that there's so much more he can do. This world would suggest so much you can do with your life. Uh, but this man was connected to God. God was connected to him. The power of God was upon him. God was able through this man's faith to walk through him to interpret this dream of Pharaoh. Preparedness is so important. There's another young man I want to touch on, um, and this is Daniel. Daniel, these, these were four men at this time, not one, four men. Daniel, Shazrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These four men found themselves in an awful situation as well. Carried away into Babylon, not knowing what would become of them. But they remained strong in faith. They stayed connected to God. And I would say to you, brethren, before I read these verses, that like as these men were, so are we. They were strangers in foreign lands. The Word of God tells us that we are strangers and foreigners in this world. They did not adapt to the life in Babylon. Joseph did not adapt to the life in Egypt. He said, I am a Hebrew. Who are we? Are we brave enough to say we're church of God? Right? Um, so, verse 25 of chapter 2 in Daniel, and just read a couple of verses there. Uh, verse, from verse 25, And Ariach brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. So here is another king, Nebuchadnezzar, dreamed a dream. And quite unusual, um, he wanted the wise men of the kingdom to tell him his dream and the interpretation because he did not remember the dream. Different to Joseph because Pharaoh told Joseph the dream. But Pharaoh, um, Nebuchadnezzar did not remember the dream and he sent a decree out to kill all the wise men in his kingdom. And they such a Daniel and his companions. I remember Daniel saying to Arya, what's the haste? And then they told Daniel what it was. Daniel did not even know. However, he was going to suffer the same fate as all the other wise men in the kingdom. Put them all to death. As far as Nebuchadnezzar was concerned, they were telling him lies. So, now we have this dream. It troubled him so much. He don't remember it. He wants them to bring it back to his memory. The king, verse 26, now that they brought Daniel in, because before I get the verse, Daniel asked Ariel for time, and he went and he talked to Shashrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he said to them, let us pray about this, right? So these four men prayed to God and asked God to tell them the dream and the interpretation, right? And then God revealed the thing to Daniel. So now Daniel is calling to Ariel to bring him on to the king. The verse 26, the king answered and said unto Daniel, whose name was Bertisha, are thou able to make known unto me the dream 
which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king had demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and magicians and soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head upon the bed. Thy bed are these. I'm not getting into the dream or the interpretation. What I want to show you here is these men stayed prepared. They stayed connected to God. Even if they were in terrible situations, right? they could have seen themselves as hopeless. You know, all is lost for them. They're taken out of their safe haven and they're brought into a, a place, an unknown, unknown land. Joseph was, so was Daniel and his companions. But these men continued to um, prepare themselves, hoping that one day deliverance will come. They did not fall into the way of life of the uh, Babylonians. They knew they were Hebrews. They knew who they were. I, I want us to see that the, the, how important it is, a lesson we can learn from these men, how prepared it is, how, how important it is to be prepared. We might be called upon, you might be called upon one day to give an answer, or maybe to preach. Well, maybe not, because you may, might not be prepared to do so. But these men, uh, stayed closely connected to God despite the awful situation and condition they found themselves in. Joseph, like Daniel, were always ready, as I said before. How about you? How about you? I feel I've passed a threshold. So I can say, how about you? If called upon to serve, Will you be ready? We should not allow circumstances in this life to prohibit us from doing what is right. Learn from these men. Learn from these men, brethren, how important it is to stay ready. Stay in touch with God. We should never allow our circumstances to bring us down. We may go through different things in life, right? But these men are good examples for us. We also have to be prepared for the fulfillment of God's promises. Prepared for deliverance. When the children of Israel uh, in, in Egypt, after plaguing Egypt, um, you know, for a while, God promised deliverance to Egypt or to the children of Israel. They were still in cap captivity when um, God promised deliverance. We can say when we are in this world. Remember what Jesus said in John 17, Father, I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil. Like as they were, so are we. Right? They were in Egypt. Um, they asked God for help. They, were, they found themselves in an awful situation, enslaved. Uh, they were in captivity. And God asked them to do this. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, <clears throat> verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, verse 3, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Verse 5, Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Verse 6, 
And he shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. It was seven. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Verse 11. And thus shall he eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So God is promising deliverance. This is a promise of deliverance. Their preparation here would be an act of faith. Will it really happen? Can God really deliver this? You know, God said to them, take this lamb, kill it on the 14th day of the first month, they must eat it and be ready for deliverance. Eat it in haste. Eat it with your shoes on your feet. You're well girded, ready to leave, ready to go. Um, the preparation for deliverance was to kill that lamb and to take the blood and to strike it on the doorpost. God did promise to pass through the land and all the blood, the houses that did not have the blood, the firstborn will die. It took faith to believe and to do this. That is what God asked them to do. That's the preparation they had to make for deliverance from slavery. Likewise, brethren, in preparing ourselves for the fulfillment of God's promises, it also demonstrates our faith. Because Jesus is preparing a place for us. He's preparing a kingdom for us. We studied this morning the message that John preached. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus preached the same. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus wants us to be ready. As Israel, their, their preparation for deliverance was to kill the lamb and put the blood on their door. And when the angels see the blood, it will pass over them. Right? That is what they had to do. Matthew 24, verse 3. Because we are preparing for the kingdom. As I said to you before, um, there are things we must do um, on this earth while we wait. We must be prepared to walk as Daniel did, as, um, as Joseph did, as the children of Israel did. Verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and the end of the world? 42 of the ch same chapter. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief will come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be always also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom the Lord had made ruler over his household? to give them meat in due season. For blessed is that servant, whom his God, when he cometh, shall so, so doing. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. See, Jesus is talking here about his coming and preparedness. We just read Exodus. The preparation is the children of Israel had to make. Not only did they have to apply that blood, but they had to be ready. They did not know the exact time it's going to happen. God told them um, to 
Do this with your staff in your hands, your shoes on your feet. Deliverance is coming. Jesus is saying here, if we had known, if we know, if we know, right, the, the hour, we'd be watching. Well, all the reason to watch, or more reason to watch now, because we don't know the day nor the hour, deliverance will come, right? So, um, it's a watch, be ready. We have to be ready. We have to be prepared for that day coming. We do not know the day. We do not know, know, do not know the hour. It could be tomorrow. Are we ready? Um, we, we just have no, no idea. I remember hearing Brother Bud saying this in a message. He said his wife said that you should always keep your house in a sale condition, ready to sell condition, um, just in case something happens and you may have to sell your property. You don't have to spend money to bring it up to that um, condition. You know, it's, it's the same thing for us. You know, we don't want to be late. Um, some people just enjoy being late for everything. Uh, just like showing up late. Uh, Jesus may come and it might be too late for some. Time does not matter for some people. Uh, but times, time does matter to God, you know? It does. So we have to be ready all the time. Even when we come to the service, it is important to God to be here a certain time because we say to Him that we will be here. God is committed to us, we should be committed as well. God promised deliverance and deliverance will come. But He's saying to us to be ready all the time. Every day in our lives we must be ready with our staff, in our hands, all by the word of God, right? We gotta have this with us all the time. We do not put it down, do our stuff, and uh oh, I gotta get ready. It might be too late. There is a song that says, too late to pray. Not only that, but Jesus said that some will come knocking on the door, and he will turn them away. Too late. Right? So, imagine when we start the service, the doors are locked and no one can come in. That's the rule. That's how it will be. It might be too late for some who take salvation very light and, and you know, just don't pay much heed to it. And so we preach it time and time again. And I do believe that some take it very seriously. But we see this world, the majority of them live a carefree life and think that they have the time to get it right. The only time we have is now. We cannot see our life needing need and change and think, well, later on we'll do it. Turn with me to, uh, let's go to John 14. See. Jesus is preparing a place for us. He said, we have to believe and trust Him. We must believe and trust Him. Um, 14, 1 said, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. That's a promise. We got to believe and trust that this will come to pass. We have some simple rules of preparation while we wait. One 
is we must be baptized. We must repent and be baptized. That is what Jesus um, asked us, asked of every one of us. And many of us have been baptized and become ministers in the church. When we call, we, we call upon, because we were in that um, preparation state, we were ready in, in a sense. And so we called to serve in God's church. So, but we all have to go through the same. Just as Israel had to do, God asked them to do something. God is asking us to do something as well. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto the Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as our Lord, our God, shall call. So that's the preparation we have to make. Now, why did they ask this question, what shall we do? Well, they heard the gospel of Christ, that this man that they crucified it was the just man. He was the one who came to save Israel and this world. They felt they had a godly sorrow for sin. So when Peter said, repent and be baptized, he was not saying something new. This was the message that Jesus gave. A message was given in Egypt. A message is given for us today to prepare ourselves for the kingdom coming. We all know about it. We have to prepare ourselves. But as we prepare ourselves for the kingdom coming, we might be called upon to serve. So we have to keep ourselves ready for whenever we're called upon as well to serve. We do not know when Christ is coming. Like I said, it could be many years from now. Somebody else, I may not, might not be here. Um, somebody else may have to do what I do here. Um, the ministers who live forever, um, young and born and raised and accept Christ and, and follow uh, instructions given and prepare themselves for the coming kingdom. In the meantime, they call to serve as well. Another thing we have to do is take the Lord's up. Right? Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 27. We're talking about preparation, brethren. Preparing ourselves for the coming kingdom of Jesus Christ. And we see beforehand how men like Gideon and Joseph prepared themselves and represented God well. We are preparing for the coming kingdom that will come very soon, I believe. It's not far away. Um, verse 27. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. He that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many fall asleep, and many sleep well. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. If any man hungry, hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. So, this is something we have to prepare ourselves for, the Lord's Supper. And we do this every year. Once a year, we take the Lord's Supper. I was talking to a, a, 
a minister recently, and I don't even know how it came up, um, but he said to me, and um, he said, Brother, I, I, don't, I don't prepare myself for the Lord's Supper. I don't have to prepare myself for the Lord's Supper. And I said, well, you know, I'm preparing this message on preparation. This was about three weeks ago. I was doing this message. I said, I'm preparing this message on preparation. And uh, I said, that came up to me in my, in my message. Um, and I, I kind of wonder what the deal is about preparing for the Lord's Supper. I said, and then he said to me, well, you know, Christ could come anytime. I said, exactly what I'm thinking. We prepare for the Lord's coming. Um, in the meantime, uh, the Lord's Supper comes every year. Uh, we do not have to make any special, or we should not have to make any special preparation for the Lord's Supper. We should be in that ready mode, ready to go. Just as I said, keeping your house ready to sell. We should always, what if we come in October? And we're waiting for the season of the Lord's Supper to prepare ourselves to take the Lord's Supper. What if he comes in October? What happens? Right? So, um, yes, Paul is making these corrections and saying that if we take the Lord's Supper unworthily, we'll, we'll face the consequences. We'll have to pay the consequences of that. Um, we should be ready. We should prepare ourselves. And of course, if we think that there are some things that we need to fix or amend um, before the Lord's Supper, well, we should deal with these. We should. The, the, the bottom line is we are preparing for the Lord's return. And as we take the Lord's Supper every year, it reminds us of the sacrifice that was made for our sins. But we are preparing for his kingdom. In verse 26, it says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show the Lord's death till he comes. So, my, my, my bottom line in bringing these verses, yes, the Lord's Supper coming up is April the 13th, um, Sunday, April the 13th after Sunday. That's when we take the Lord's Supper this year. We prepare ourselves for that. If there is something needs to be done, then every one of us should, you know, do what is right to partake. Um, if there is some hidden faults, do what is right to take part in the um, body and blood of Christ. If it requires, if you want to take the Lord's Supper, and you, you not baptized, well, you have to be baptized. Right? To, be, to take part. And it's, that's what the Word of God tells us. Repent, be baptized, we take the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Be always ready. We must be ready all the time for the coming of Christ. It is urgent upon us. We can see all the fulfillment of things around us. Right? Things are not getting better. Um, things are getting worse day after day. We must be ready to walk for Christ, be ready for the coming of Christ. I want to see you on the kingdom, um, the new Jerusalem, that place that uh, Revelation 15 describes to us, that sea of glass. I want to see you there. I hope to see you there. I want to be there. I hope to be there. We all want to be there, but we have to prepare ourselves but if Christ comes today or tomorrow, to go with Him. God bless you, brother. Amen.